Okay, it looks like we've got some people arriving. We want to welcome you all to our Tech Solutions to Thrive in a post-COVID golf world. Welcome you to the uh, the webinar. We're going to get started here probably just a couple minutes after the top of the hour to make sure everybody can get in and get settled. Um, our speakers are all are all live right now via audio and video. For all of you attending, we do have you muted in this attendance just because we don't need sound coming from 300 different places all at once. So I hope you understand there. Uh, there is a spot where you can um, submit questions for us. So please go ahead and submit those. We're going to answer questions at the end of the webinar when we get there. Hopefully we can get through all of them. We'll stay on for as long as we can in, in answering those. Um, you're also going to be getting an email after the webinar, about three to four hours after the webinar ends, that it's going to have a link to the recording of the webinar. It's also going to have links to each of our three companies, should you have any questions to pose to us directly. And any questions that we cannot get to during the webinar, one of us will be reaching out to you to uh, answer your question individually at, at that point. Um, so we're going to get started here in just a couple minutes. We've got about 200 people that are online and in the webinar room right now. Um, we, we, we had a number more than that registered, so we're going to give you just a, about another minute here to, to get going. Again, for any of you that have just come in, welcome to the webinar. We're going to get going here in just a minute uh, or so. There is a Q&A section that if you do have any questions, please pose them to us in the Q&A section. We're going to get to those right at the end of the webinar. We've got a lot of great stuff to cover today uh, with solutions to really help you in this post-COVID world. Um, I think we're, we're getting pretty close to getting started. Scott, Ian, are you guys about ready to go ahead and kick things off here? Yep. Ready to, go. ready to go based on the number of people that are in here. So we're going to start with Club Profit. We're going to start talking about solutions that will work for you in a post-COVID world. Perfect. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. Uh, and thanks for everyone that's attending. Uh, my name is Scott Merchant. I'm the Chief Growth Officer for uh, Club Profit. Um, with me is Ian Versaw, the National Sales Director for Club Profit. And um, um, we, we'll, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the features and, and uh, products that are that are a hot button topics here over the last 60 days. This has been uh, 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 every other season, our development list has changed, our support operation has changed, and the things that you're gonna see today, they might be in other software providers, so even if you're not using Club Profit, maybe you can you know have some takeaways, uh, but we are gonna show you through here the um, what we believe to be the most important topics here in a, in a post-COVID um, world. So Rob, I don't know if you have the slides coming up, but um, just a real quick note here, just on on all of these companies here with Gallus and with One to One, and I'm sure with any other tech provider, um, this has been the busiest 60 to 90 day stretch of any uh, technology firm in the history of Earth. Um, Club Profit and Gallus and any other uh, company that's out there is probably probably feeling the same thing. So, um, the golf sector is one of the first sectors to open back up if it has been closed, and um, when it when now that we are getting open. Everybody is uh, uh, playing by a different set of rules. So Georgia is different than Hawaii. It's different than California, New York, um, which is creating some uh, some interesting challenges for the tech provider. So you know you might see things a little differently in your state than, than the way we're talking about it. Uh, but just know that we're trying to adapt um, as much as we can to every single um, every single option. Um, and then um, we do want to get through the the. Um, uh, back to normal ASAP and whatever that new normal looks like um, we want to we want to get going so we're going to talk uh, a few things here today on the web-based pre-check um, individual golfer pre-check uh, mobile operations and, and iPad solutions and being able to operate outside of your normal um, golf course um, clubhouse and then uh, contactless payments has been a hot button issue for credit cards for Apple pay for uh, Google pay or Google wallet what does that mean for you know, you at the golf course? What do you need to do to kind of get going and other um, other best practices? So, um, Ian, are you um, are you able to, to see the screen and get going? Yeah, I don't see the uh, is the slideshow started. I don't see it. Um, Rob, if you can go ahead and get the 
Yeah, it, it it is up and live right now. Okay, perfect. All right, so then we'll just keep keep rolling through. We're on your uh, web pre-check nuts and bolts slide right now. Okay, perfect. I got a black screen, but uh, I have my iPad, so I can keep going. Um, so web pre-check nuts and bolts. So the basic idea here is that a golfer books a tee time, whether that be online or over the phone, uh, and then they get a confirmation email and a reminder email that number one, uh, if they're a club profit customer and a Gallus customer, the first thing we want to do is promote the download of the Gallus app uh, because the Gallus app is the single easiest way to manage check-ins with the golf shop closed. And you'll see why here in a minute. Um, so that confirmation email is going to have a link to the Gallus app if, if you're a mutual customer. If not, it's going to have a, uh, a link that says check in here and it's going to be a browser, a web link. Uh, and that is a technology we developed with Gallus. We stripped it out of the app uh, free of charge temporarily while uh, all these golf courses are trying to get on their feet. Uh, we'll put a price on it when things slow down and, and you'll have the option of whether to continue with that or not. But really, when you see everything we have to offer here, I think you're going to see that, you know, if you decide to go with web check-in right now just to, to keep your doors open, you're, you know, Rob's going to show you all the advantages to, to kind of upgrading to the full Gallus app uh, and what that does for you. So what you see on the screen here is the web check-in form on the left-hand side um, where the golfer clicked on a link and they have the option to either enter their reservation ID or put their username and password in. That's the same username and password they registered with Club Profit in order to book a tee time. Uh, it'll automatically find the reservation. You can see on the right after they typed in the username and password, we see the Sticks Golf Club, uh, Corey Rupert's Player One, and we don't know who Player One, Two, and Three are. And Corey has the option to select himself uh, or select um, all four golfers if he'd like. So I think if we go to the next slide, and real quick, just to jump into on that on that web only, just a quick clarification for our Canadian um, uh, courses that are there in Canada due to the Moneris integration and the technology stack there, um, it's app only in Canada. So your golf courses Gallus app will be the only place they would be able to check in. So there's a slight delineation there from the U.S. to Canada. So go ahead. Yeah. Right. So now we're on the, the price and pay. So that golfer selected. It looks like one name, uh, it says players to check in one of four, Corey Rupert, $37. He clicks pay now. If he's checked in before, which Corey has, you see his credit card is saved on file. And all he has to do is hit submit and that payment is done. He gets the email confirmation. Uh, if he's not, his credit card's not on file and this is the first time he's done it, he has the option to go ahead and do that. And there's a little checkbox to save the credit card information for future, uh, future visits. Um, you'll notice, that, you know, a lot of questions have been asked about what this does to credit card processing fees. Um, you know, it's a really complicated question and every credit card is different, but on average, it's about a 30 basis point increase. What that means is if you're currently paying an average of 2.4% processing, you'll probably, if you switched over 100% of your transactions to card not present, meaning web check-in, online check-in, then your rate would go from 2.4% to 2.7%. Um, so there is a little bump up that comes from the credit card companies. Um, so we've checked in, we've set, used our credit card on file, and now we go to the next slide and we're going to see uh, payment successful confirmation and what the golf shop sees or the golf attendant who's standing on the first tee with an iPad, they see a live tee sheet with that tee time paid and checked in with, indicated by the green highlighted, um, uh, highlighted tee sheet. The receipt is going to be on the Gallus app or on the person's phone, uh, but they don't necessarily need the receipt because you can see as a starter right there that they're paid and checked in. The next uh, slide is about what about my special cases? So you didn't notice anywhere on there where we were able to select uh, seniors or juniors or anything like that. With our booking system, there's a there's something called a buddy system where if you have all, all your seniors coded as seniors and all your residents and non-residents coded properly, where they, their, their names come up on the T-sheet automatically with the correct rate, then you can allow your golfers to select their buddies during the booking process. And they'll each individually get an email confirmation saying, here are the check-in procedures. Uh, otherwise, you, a lot of our customers have gone to single rates, to simple, simplified rate structures. I know for some you know, resident, non-resident situations, that's not possible. So uh, the buddy system is a solution for that. And then just the old fashioned, hey, we got to call the golf shop and have them update this to a resident or non-resident rate in order for web check-in to work. Um, 
once that's done, once you have, once you start having some history of golfers playing together, of who's seniors, who's residents and non-residents, the system is going to take over from there because at the booking process, it's going to suggest common players that, that that person plays with. So at the beginning, it might be a challenge, but as we gather more names and we link people together on the tee sheet, then this, the process will become easier. Yeah, and buddy list was one of those features that some golf courses use, but most didn't. And it's it's now a feature that's become a hot button topic. So, you know, you want to activate that. Um, certainly building the database of golfers two, three, and four, something the industry hasn't done really all that well. But as you build that database and you know, uh, you know, uh, Rob Hoffman is a senior and you've got him in there, uh, if you can identify that or if the reserving golfer identifies that, it'll make it smoother over time. If he has to call in to get his special rate and you're marking manually golfers two, three, and four. But once you do change player two um, over the phone to a senior, when he goes to log in and he goes to, uh, and that golfer goes to check in, they will get the senior rate. So there's a, there's a manual uh, process there. And we're thinking about that in terms of development, but we, you know, the important thing is to trust and verify <laughs> that we don't want to just make senior rates and resident rates and all those things, you know, publicly available without some sort of authentication step between the golf shop um, and the customer. So, um, but right now it will do those special rates, but it will require a little bit of work and database entry, which is actually a, it's actually a good thing. There's a little bit of setup there at the get-go, but over time that will smooth out. Scott, why don't you do the next slide, the web pre-check best practices? Yeah, so something Ian um, had mentioned there a little bit is on the, the simplification of rates is, you know, for a, I would take a moment and pause if you're going to open May 1 or if you're opening May 9 or if you're already open and, and looking to do pre-check is to, to think about those rate structures that have been in the past 20 different player types and 15 different um, days and, and a lot of different variability. This might be a time to, to simplify those things uh, in terms of just the pre-check will go a little bit easier. It'll be a little bit easier on your staff. Um, it makes things a little bit quicker, uh, which will be helpful in a contactless uh, payment world. Um, so one of the best practices is just to look at that uh, rate structure that you had before this pandemic started and think, you know, how do I, how to maybe simplify that and raise those rates. Um, one of the things Ian uh, mentioned was the, the rise of basis points, um, potentially or not potentially, but the rise of basis points for e-commerce transactions. That's one of many uh, factors for you to think about uh, with uh, limited cart supply and, and maybe tea times being more spaced out or, or higher costs. Just maybe take a moment to, to simplify those rates and, and try to the top uh, part there to become a pre-check expert um, you'll be retraining your customers potentially on how to book so highly recommend you know owners operators head pro staff uh, go through the process you know book a tea time pay for it become a pre-check expert so that you're able to communicate that to your customers um, we believe that this is the opportune time to almost mandate the download of the gallus app and and uh, and rob and jason will get into a lot of features that are that make a lot of sense in an app the golfers touching their own phone so they don't have to you know, communicate with you or grab a scorecard or do a lot of different things that, that might be a little dicey. And specifically from a customer acquisition and customer loyalty standpoint, this is the perfect time to do that. Um, the pre-check-in works better um, right there inside the app. The confirmations are, are recorded there inside the app. So it's a lot, there's a lot of a reason there to kind of mandate that um, for your golfers. Um, yeah, real quick too, Scott, when you're talking about that, you're talking about mandating it on the golfer side of things, not mandating it, um, you know, for the course operators that are on this yeah. webinar right now. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah just get, this is a nice marketing mechanism for your golfers to kind of keep pushing that uh, into their into their phone. Um, the email confirmation, is, as uh, Ian started at the beginning, the email confirmation, the email reminder, take a look at those like today, you know, um, make sure they're good looking and beautiful and, and uh, explain the rules, the new rules of your operation, but also, you know, make sure that the, the pre-check button or you're, you're going to need to check in by clicking here is, is prominent in that, in that confirmation and in that reminder. Um, I think most systems have <laughs> email confirmations, email reminders. So um, just updating those with what's going on. Um, and having them steered toward the app download, steered toward the pre-check is a, is a good best practice. Um, for signage and parking lot, I've seen that um, on a few places, but the digital version of that is to have an app push notification on arrival. And, you know, so those are uh, some of the things where, you know, Club Profit will end and gals will pick up, and I'm sure they'll talk about that, but 
you know, being able to push notify them when they come in parking lot right to the, the check-in can just, um, you know, simplify this and, and keep the process moving for the new operation. I'm going to move to the iPad features. Um, so, you know, if the golf shop is closed or if you're trying to minimize traffic in the golf shop, then a, a key component of that has, is the iPad and having a mobile solution, whether that be for, um, you know, parking lot pickup of takeout food orders or digital receipts. Um, with the iPad, you know, we recommend turning off the feature where you use your finger to sign on the screen to minimize touching. Um, to retrain, you know, your, your, your food and beverage staff to, to ask, you know, uh, would you like to add a gratuity to this or something to that effect? Um, because traditionally you would just point the iPad towards the customer and they would use their finger, but we're trying to get away from that. So the, the credit card processing uh, does not require signatures uh, in most cases anymore. Um, so we can turn those features off. We can turn receipts off. Um, but the iPad is going to be critical for uh, the live tee sheet on the first tee. If people are not coming in the golf shop to see who's paid and checked in and then the quickly adjust rates or to adjust somebody to make them a senior right on the first tee if needed. Um, so we've gotten a lot of, of increased um, iPad uh, uh, interest in the last uh, few weeks um, with this pre-check feature. A lot of these iPads have cellular connections. So if your Wi-Fi doesn't reach out to the golf course or the first tee, that's okay. You just contact your cellular provider like AT&T or Verizon. You add the iPad to your cell phone contract. It could be $10 or $15 a month for a cellular iPad. Contactless payments. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, what we're seeing a lot here over the last 60 days is essentially the death of cash. Um, and it's been a guillotine shop um, where golf courses are not accepting, you know, dirty $20 bills from their, from their golfers anymore. So in that environment, um, you need to look at um, kind of what we call no swipe payment, you know, getting away from chip and pen uh, again, might be a little more on the, on the cost side, but you're not touching anything. You're not having your consumers and your golfers touch anything. Um, one of the devices and check with your credit card providers, but uh, one of the devices is the PAX S 300. And again, that, that works for Apple pay for, you know, any digital, uh, wallet there. So you might want to check those <laughs> to make sure that um, I, I've seen some people that are just putting a magnetic stripe uh, swipe reader six feet away. Um, you know, that's fine too. Uh, but we want to try to get away, I, I think, essentially from chip and pin. Uh, you know, we've got people touching the same uh, pin pads. not really great. There will be some retraining of the customers. I've had a lot of uh, nice discussions with golf course owners that that uh, now are aware that their uh, golfers might not have Apple Pay or Google Pay set up. Possibly in the email confirmation, you might say, get your digital wallet set up before you arrive. Uh, you might have a link to Apple Pay. You might have a link to Google Pay. Um, you will be doing a public service for, for these people. I've been setting up uh, digital wallets for uh, you know my older set and aunts and uncles here over the last couple of weeks. So um, you might be doing a favor to keep your golfers alive by being the, the first point of contact to show them and force them into an Apple Pay situation. So if they have a smartphone, um, any sort of newer iPhone or, or Android device, you, you should become familiar with that because, you know, they they might not be using that the way they should. And, and the golf course could be the first uh, hand holding environment for them to get set up. And once they do it, they'll enjoy it. Um, but uh, again, but the the payment uh, of cash method is going to be uh, could be dead here uh, over the next couple couple months. So, um, all right, I think that's it for the death of for the death of cash and and the best practices. Um, just overall, regardless of the T sheet and the point of sale that you're using, um, take a moment here to refresh uh, your visibility and your um, uh, streamlining of online reservations. Check it on mobile devices. Check it on iPads. This is the same sort of best practices we've been talking about for a while. But customers will be gravitating more towards the online environment. Your golf shop may be closed. You might be forcing them into that online environment. Um, make sure it's easy to use. Any feature that you can for them to easily log in through Facebook or through Google or through uh, Apple ID, um, you know, and have your phone system directing that traffic into an online environment is going to be very important. Um, Ian mentioned no signatures. Test that uh, functionality. Find those options to turn off signatures uh, for the common pin pad. 
um, you want to try to turn those off wherever possible. There's, that's not a winning situation to have people grab the same, um, you know, digital pen um, and then wipe it down after every transaction. So contact your credit card provider, contact your software provider or us, and, and we'll help you turn off those signatures. Um, and he had mentioned email receipts and tips. Don't share paper. Um, you know, it might be a little awkward, but, you know, for somebody who's you used to, you know, present something and have them sign it or have them uh, write on the iPad what their tip was. Now you'll have to have that conversation because you cannot turn control or paper over to them and then all of a sudden start grabbing it. So come up with a script. Would you like to leave a tip uh, on the transaction today? And for how much? Yeah, $3, great. And and the server um, or the um, beverage cart person takes care of it. Don't, don't, don't share paper or devices back and forth. Um, and you'll need to start looking at offsite access um, you know, for if we're closed down again, how do we get access to our system? Um, things like online billing, things like time clock. Uh, you don't have the your staff all touching the same monitor, so you got to think about those sorts of things. Um, email confirmations, specifically, th these are a, these are a lifesaver. Uh, that used to be kind of a a nice to have. Oh, I'll think I'll collect this guy's email address. Now you have to have it. You have to have an email. The email confirmation has to uh, tell them the, the new rules, the no cash, the Google wallet, whatever it is, you got to prepare the golfers before they come in. Um, and the the future development, I, I guarantee you, uh, every tech company, whether it's us and Gauss and one-to-one -one or anybody else that's out there, their development priority list looks totally different than what it was um, 60 days ago. So some of the things that um, were in our software that were okay, that people didn't really you know, care that much about, like cart reservations and cart fleet management, um, you know, are now all of a sudden hot button issues because we've got different rules across every state. So we're working on those things. We're working on, um, you know, figuring out uh, more features to pre-check whether we're upselling range balls or merchandise. Uh, maybe we'll come up with something on a two-factor authentication for, for rate management uh, to help it uh, go even better. And any new learnings from the field if golf courses, you know, fly to get open. There's going to be all sorts of features and things that they need in this contactless world. So, um, communicate with any provider that you have with any idea because what you're doing there could be a great idea that's incorporated elsewhere. So, um, but again, the T-sheet and the POS is, is just part of that puzzle. Um, we're happy to help at Club Profit, um, but yeah, I think you can take these learnings across any other T-sheet and POS, but having other vendors work in conjunction and work in harmony is, is key. And uh, I can't say enough about um, the, the team at Gallus Golf and one-to-one -one marketing for the uh, tech integrations that we're having and, and um, these are people that we trust and um, philosophically agree with what we're doing, which is providing our revenue. And um, you know, we're scrambling to get as many uh, quality features delivered to you as possible. Um, and I'll turn it over to uh, to the folks at Gallus to to kind of go over their their app features. Great, thanks, Scott. Hey, well, one thing I do want to touch on here: we've seen a few questions that have have come in already. Um, I, I just want to take a second to answer a couple of those. Um, I know a lot of you that that are um, fortunate enough to be open right now. Your course may be swamped and busy, so one of the questions that has come in is that. Um, it, it, is the webinar being recorded right now? Will you have the opportunity to come back and review this in more detail if you're having to divide your attention a little bit right now? So the answer to that's yes. There will be an email that comes out at the end of the webinar, uh, about a, two hours after the webinar. Um, you'll get that email. It'll have a link in it to not just view this entire webinar, but to also reach out to us individually as, as companies if you have any direct questions there uh, of us. Not to stop you from any questions that you're putting into the Q&A right now, we're gonna to try to get to those. I know that there have been some questions that have come up about pricing already of some of our services. Um, I think it's best that we probably try to have those discussions with you guys uh, individually because I know we each offer a number of custom solutions that are per your individual brand and it would make sense that um, it's not really a one size fits all answer that we can give to you there. So we should have those discussions separately. I do kind of wanna pick it up though from where um, Scott was and Scott and Ian were and, and talking about everything with Club Profit. I know a number of you on this webinar are not with Club Profit and while we can't recommend them more highly than, than what we do, um, 
I also know that some of you need a solution right now. How can we accept payments right now? So some of these solutions that that I'm going to put in front of you don't even necessarily require that they are used with an app that we provide. Uh, Gallus apps, by the way, it often gets referred to as the Gallus app. It's it's our technology, but it's licensed by each individual course and each individual brand. So while it is our technology that you'd be utilizing, it's your app. So if it's the Cog Hill Golf and Country Club, if it's Wolf Run Golf Course, whatever the app may be, it's 100% branded yours. Your customers are downloading it and grabbing it out of the app store for you. That said, some of the solutions I want to talk about don't necessarily require any of any of our solutions right now. We wanted to talk about some technology today that you could utilize if you just had to accept payments right now and didn't have a way to go about doing it. So there are a lot of consumer payment methods out there, uh, like the slide I have on the screen right now, including Venmo, PayPal, other pieces like that, that you can utilize in a web version. Now within the context of the app that um, you would have as a course, if you look here, we're talking about Goat Hill Golf Course here in the San Diego area. They can send, the left side is a Venmo, the right side is a PayPal here in the slide. They can send a request via a link right through the app. It can be sent either as a screen that sits there and people are able to access it. Um, I mean, as a button that sits there, people are able to access it and go ahead and make payment. Or it can be something that's sent as a push notification down to a single individual that they can go ahead and access that link and, and make payment that way. Um, in addition to that, things can work via PayPal. Now, when we talk about this, if you wanna to get to a point that you are looking at some form of mobile check-in, what we're hearing from a lot of courses and clients out there right now is they're having to default to a 100% deposit is what it's called with most point of sale, T-sheet, booking engine providers right now, where basically it's prepaid rounds of golf. You can do that. If you don't have the capability of doing that within your current setup and you're not, you want to be live right now, maybe you're looking at going with Club Profit, you're looking at making that move, but there's a little bit of ramp up time there for you to get that done. You can be live with a version of a booking engine, T-sheet, and payment within hours. There's a an online booking system called Acuity. And within Acuity, it allows you to basically set up a calendar with the number of appointments per time slot that can be booked within that calendar, an appointment being a tea time in this case. Now, in this case, you would set it maybe if you're tea times or, or you want to book them at eight minutes apart or 10 minutes apart, you basically set it up for the number of golfers you're going to allow per that time slot. And it connects with PayPal that you can have them when they book, go ahead and pay or you can receive that booking without payment and then submit to them an email with either that Venmo link or that PayPal link for them to go ahead and pay you ahead of that round of golf. So it's something that you can do this way and get something moving to start accepting payment online. It all can output to a spreadsheet that you can use as your T-sheet and they're going to get an, a, a confirmation email that comes to them after they book this tea time through this method that will allow you to have that link embedded into that email for them to go ahead and pay at that point. It's not the ideal. It's not 100% integrated to your point of sale system. It's going to require some work on the back end of, of merging the two and some reconciliation. But if you're in a position that you can, you're allowed to be open right now and you need to get open, it's a potential solution and something you can have going. One other thing that we're seeing that's coming up quite a bit is getting contactless in a number of other ways. So I'm gonna talk about this and then Jason's gonna talk about a couple of other solutions that we're seeing that are popular with customers right now. But a lot of courses are not able to put out their paper scorecards they used to be able to put out. They're not able to put riders in carts at all, or if they are, it's single rider carts and a lot more people are walking than, than what used to be walking. Um, the clubhouse is closed. So the computer to access to post scores after your round, it's not accessible anymore. You're not able to get in there and post your scores. And even if you could, a lot of times that's a touchscreen computer that's set up in there and people don't want to be touching things that other people are touching. So this is where we've built a, a we've had it for a long time, a virtual caddy. Um, with less frequent use of carts, GPS is built into there so people are able to get yardage. It's a touchscreen GPS. They can get yardage uh, 
to trouble, to clear trouble, whether it's to reach a hazard, to clear a hazard for layup yardages, whatever it may be they want. They can track distances for every shot they hit. They can record their strokes and keep their game and share their scorecard with the other players in their foursome or larger group that they're playing with. So if they're playing a skins game with carryovers, with handicaps in there, it's something they can do all through this virtual caddy and share with the people that are in their group. Um, in addition to that, they've got connection to food and beverage that Jason's going to talk about here in a minute and any leaderboard if they're playing in a little bit larger group. It's all built into this as they're using it and, and move along. From here, um, I kind of want to turn this over to Jason so he can talk to you a little bit about some of the contactless food and beverage options we have. And I'm going to continue to monitor some of your questions as they're coming in. Great, thanks, Rob. Um, yeah, so obviously this pandemic has uh, um, affected you know the restaurant industry uh, pretty significantly, and uh, obviously that's affecting golf courses too. You know, many of you have you know food and beverage facilities uh, you know on the property, whether it's uh, you know bar, uh, full robust restaurant, um, even the, a small halfway house, and uh, it's something a challenge a lot of you are facing is how do we continue to keep that operation open as as most restaurants across the country have been forced to go full takeout and no dine-in so um so one of the things that uh you know gallus has always had some form or version of uh food and beverage that that lives within the app to allow members or golfers to at a minimum at least view a menu um, and even call in an order uh, a couple of years ago we introduced a more interactive option that allows your golfers or members to actually, you know, interact with, choose their items, uh, customize them, uh, even pay and and order them right through the app as well, and let the staff receive that order digitally. Uh, we've seen, um, you know, a spike in interest in this. Obviously, in the last couple months, as uh, you know, many facilities are, uh, in addition to golf, they're also trying to see and figure out how do they keep their food and beverage operations going. Um, and so very similar to, you know, the pre-check uh, functionality that Scott and Ian were talking about, um, this allows your customers to complete the entire transaction uh, on their phone, uh, minimizing, uh, you know, face-to-face uh, -face interaction, uh, lets the staff receive the order um, right there digitally, prepare it, and have it ready for pickup on uh, with minimal contact. Uh, so, you know, this gives you the flexibility, uh, something like this. Obviously, we're not, you know, the only solution that provides this, but, you know, I know a lot of businesses uh, that are at all serving food and beverage are looking at this, and I think every golf course should, should look at some option to be able to, you know, deliver that contactless food and beverage. Um, and, and the great thing about, uh, you know, many of our clubs and what they're seeing is they still have the full flexibility of what you would get with somebody ordering, you know, in person at the counter, um, including the ability to fully customize the order, whether it's choose what sides they want, uh, add specific notes to the staff, whether it's, you know, hey, can you hold the mayo, um, add some extra cheese on this, you know, burger, whatever it may be. Um, and also just like Ian and, and Scott were talking about contactless, you know, payments and how important that is, uh, you can also accept payment uh, during uh, the order. So that way you don't have to uh, accept payment in person when they come to pick it up. Um, if, it, if there's not any payment, maybe your private club, maybe it needs to be charged to a member account. Um, it also gives you the ability to even type in a, uh, the user for them to put in their member uh, ID. So that way they can, it can be just charged to their member account. Um, and, and look, the economics of this are different as well. Um, so, you know, like, like talking about changing, you know, maybe increasing rates or looking at your rate structure, uh, you'd have the ability to also add in things like service fees, uh, maybe delivery fees that uh, is going to help, you know, um, help make this economical uh, for you as well. Um, in addition to uh, allowing them to tip right there, allowing you to add coupons if you're trying to really, you know, drive and compete with the other, uh, you know, restaurant facilities in, in your market there. So just um, a really great option, um, and I know something that uh, you know a lot of, of courses are, are looking at. How do we change how we're operating? How do we deliver something like this to keep both the staff and the customer safe, but also uh, provide a, a seamless experience um, to to keep the operations uh, going there. So the other thing that uh, one other thing that I, I want to talk about that is important to I know everybody uh, is uh, your tournaments, outings, leagues. I know that is something everybody's trying to scramble and think about. Okay, how do we how do we keep that going? You know, having a 144 player you know 8 a.m. shotgun is going to be really difficult 
to do uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, so, you know, it's everybody's going to have to get creative with, you know, how do we keep outings and the outing business and outing revenue moving um, at your facilities. Uh, things are going to change. Um, you know, it's not going to be exactly the traditional, you know, outing experience, but I think those that are able to uh, get creative um, are going to find ways to keep that business coming in the door. Um, I, I've seen uh, a number of clubs, whether it's our clients or um, even some that, you know, aren't even using our technology, you know, really use a virtual, you know, uh, outing type experience. Uh, luckily, uh, with uh, the the tournament software that we have built into the app and the functionality that lives in the app, uh, we're able to support that even more. Um, it allows, uh, you know, uh, a solution where the customer can really interact uh, from start to finish the full uh, outing experience. Um, in that sort of uh, you know self-contained virtual outing experience, that includes everything from registering for for the outing, uh, even paying for it, so they don't have to do that. You know when they show up um, at, at the course, uh, they can join the the outing uh, right from their uh, phone, just similar to the check-in experience there, um, and then keep score uh, right on the app uh, for themselves or their or themselves and their teammate maybe, um, and uh, without again like Rob said, having to grab a paper scorecard, turn that back in. Um, again, that's something everybody's trying to avoid is passing that back and forth. And they can view the, the results uh, uh, right in the app, either uh, during the round or, you know, after they've gone back home, um, because this may be something where I've seen this being uh, implemented is, again, they're not doing that 8 a.m. you know shotgun everybody showing at the same same time, but they might you know be spreading out uh, when people are playing, um, but they're still able to hold some form of that outing to get people uh, competing. Um, uh, let the, those events still take place again just it looks a little bit differently there. Um, and then one other, uh, you know, really, I think, uh, interesting way to, to look at it um, as well. Um, actually, Rob, if you go back, um, is, uh, you know, we have something that uh, has been used by a number of clubs. And again, this is just something else that is now getting a lot more interest here, is uh, we have a monthly tournament series uh, option where a club can actually set up uh, an, an event that will span multiple days, uh, multiple weeks, even multiple months, um, and allows people to compete uh, across multiple days where they don't all have to play on the same day and they're uh, and but they can compete towards you know a fun uh, goal for that week that month whatever it may be so they can set up things like an eclectic type tournament where um, uh, you know they're trying to get their own best ball score as low as possible uh, or a, a stableford style tournament where they are um, you know, trying to earn as many points uh, as they can over maybe a week or a month or whatever it may be. Um, so it's it's a way to let people participate in in um, an outing. Uh, maybe it's a version of a league that uh, allows them to play when it's convenient for them, you know, when they can't all get together at the same time, but still compete with their friends or peers um, or, uh, or whoever it may be. Um, and the great thing about both of the or the options within that platform is that uh, the the better uh, the more points uh, the best way to get more points or the best way to lower their score um, is to play more often, which is something we all want. So it really really supports you know obviously that end end goal there. So um, so yeah. So just again, uh, I know clubs are getting very creative with how to keep that segment of their business going, and just a few ideas on how you how you can do that. And the last thing I'll touch on just really quickly, uh, um, I, you know, Scott and Ian talk talked about a lot, so I'm not going to dive too much into it, but is obviously, you know, um, ditching the wallet, you know, uh, really trying to avoid pa passing cash, you know, back and forth, um, uh, even credit cards, signing, those types of things. Um, and as Scott mentioned earlier, you know, most technology companies today, you know, they're shifting things that were on their roadmap, uh, everything's changed. Um, and this was something that, that Gallus had been working on, but obviously is a high priority for uh, for us now is to, to really support that, you know, contactless payment, um, have a, you know, wallet type feature where your customers can preload funds uh, for use at your facilities. Uh, they can use those funds from the safety of their phone and apply them towards, you know, green fees, food and beverage, whatever it may be, um, and, and have it all live right there uh, in the phone, keeping them safe keeping your staff safe, uh, very similar to, you know, a Starbucks style um, uh, app experience where uh, they, it can just be scanned and, and used from there. So definitely something that, uh, um, you know, we're, we're trying to focus on what is going to help um, our clients in the industry get get back to as close to normal as possible and, and uh, a priority for us there. So um, 
that's what I've got on, on our end on a food and beverage outings wallet. I'm going to ta- uh, toss it over to uh, Ryan Wood over at One to One Marketing and talk about the importance of uh, you know communicating all these new things to your customers. Thanks, Jason. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk just briefly and then we'll get to some questions uh, here soon uh, just about messaging and kind of what we're seeing going out, what we're seeing in the industry, how our customers are messaging their customers, and then some tools that we have that uh, are free for uh, you all to use to be able to, to get that out. So I'm joined with Kent Ashby, who's our uh, a director of marketing and who runs our Ignite program. And so uh, after I'm done, he's going to talk some more specifics about the type of messaging that he's seeing and uh, some suggestions uh, for you all. So uh, just broadly, um, you know, we're seeing more messaging than we've ever seen through our platform and through our team, uh, our support team. As Scott mentioned, you know, we're as busy as we've ever been. And um, it's been interesting to see. And I mean, it certainly makes sense that uh, golf courses are just looking to communicate with their customers and just keep them uh, abreast as to what's going on. Um, And so we're seeing more emails, more website pop ups and and, uh, messages on the website with just kind of the fluid nature of um, you know, wh- what's going on in each individual facility in each region of the country. And, um, and what's been interesting to see is that the messaging going up, the engagement rates have also gone up significantly. So people are really hungry for your messaging out there. Um, so don't feel like you're giving them too much if you ever do. Um, their the engagement rate, rates are really high and people are, uh, we feel like the demand is there, whether, you know, if you're not a facility that's per se open yet, um, and you're wondering what the response will be, um, at least what we've seen that the demand is there and the engagement rate is really high through the email channel and the website channels. Uh, and also on the search side, the, the demand side and Google, and Ken's gonna touch on that a little bit. So um, so that's what we've been seeing, You know, just high, high rates of messaging and then just creative use of our tooling. So if you're a Club Profit or a Gallus customer, um, that is certainly the way to go with the pre-check option. However, you know, we have some customers that are using their, you know, they're just trying to do anything they can to get payment in the door. And so they're using their online store um, for payment for green fees as well as food and beverage. Um, you know, so that's that's an option that some courses are using successfully. Um, and then in addition to that, and separate from kind of our one-to-one ecosystem, we have a tool out there called Campaign Pilot that's uh, free to the industry. So, um, and it stands alone and agnostic to -to one-to-one. So the nice thing about Campaign Pilot and and the reason that it was built is just to provide a simple tool to syndicate your marketing and messaging across multiple channels. So because of the fluid nature of, you know, what's going on and the volume of messaging that needs to go out, the nice thing about campaign, with Campaign Pilot is that you can get a message to Facebook, Twitter, Google My Business, a pop-up on your website, an email uh, template put together, and uh, a push notification through the Gallus app, counter signs, cart signs, all in one tool. So there's it's just a really simple wizard to walk you through creating that campaign and uh, or that message. And then just with a few clicks, five to 10 minutes, you can have uh, your, your update distributed to all of those channels. And uh, it'll track it all for you and, and report back on, on that messaging as well. So. Um, we have some pre-built stuff, uh, campaigns and campaign pilots. So if you're a little uncertain on the language of what to use and whatnot, um, there's we've used uh, the NGCOA Park and Play program, and we've uh, loaded up a campaign there that just you can click, 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 and you know run that campaign really easily, or run you know whatever campaign or messaging that you're looking to get out about what's going on at your facility. Um, the, the nice thing about Campaign Pilot, in addition to just the general messaging across those channels, is it has some e-commerce capabilities. So you can sell products and also take registration uh, for events through Campaign Pilot and then collect payment through uh, various payment processors that we uh, integrate with. So we've got some courses out there selling prepaid rounds, season passes, uh, registrations for future events, and also using Campaign Pilot just creatively to um, you know, for payment for uh, uh, tee times. Uh, when they show up at the golf course, they can just scan a QR code, pay for it right there on their phone, and they're done. Now, it doesn't integrate with your tee sheet. It's not good for multiple rates, so there's some limitations. But, um, you know, so the, the Gallus and the Club Profit solution is the best uh, bet if that's what, if you have access to that technology. But if not, you know, Campaign Pilot, you can set up something simple uh, that's really easy 
to uh, to take payment for you know whatever it is that you have going on at the golf uh, uh, at your golf course. Um, so that's the nice thing with that, as well as takeout orders. We've got a course using um, Campaign Pilot to take payment for their fish fry. They have a weekly fish fry which they continue to to uh, to run, and so uh, you know families can just place their order uh, through the the dedicated landing page that it generates and um, and process process that order and just go pick it up from the facility. So just you know a lot of creative stuff going on out there, and so I uh, just wanted to put out. Uh, this tool, you know, for you to use, it's free. Just go to campaignpilot.com to sign up and, you know, we're available to help support you in that and uh, help onboard you if you have any questions uh, at no cost. So, and then I'm going to kick it over to Kent, who's going to just talk a little bit about the specifics of the messaging and, and what he's seeing on the marketing side. Yeah, I'm going to try to make this, you know, breeze through this. So we have plenty of time for questions. So um, if anybody has a question about my slides, you know, you can always shoot me an email. Um, but, but really what we're seeing um, or, or what we're suggesting from a marketing and, and communication standpoint is really what Ryan was saying is just continuous updates and uh, communication across all channels. Um, and again, Campaign Pilot is a good uh, for, you know, platform to do that. It makes it much more efficient to do that across all channels. Um, but uh, you can also do that manually if, if you prefer. Um, now, when you're doing that, a, an important, like a key thing to do, obviously, is to remind people of the safety measures that you have in place. Um, you would be surprised, or you probably wouldn't be surprised, but there's a lot of people that, um, you know, aren't willing to leave their home. Uh, and 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 some, some of it's, you know, can be justified and, and whatnot. But in order to have the best chance to, you know, pique the interest of the largest population, you really need to say, Here's what we're doing. We're doing walking only or single rider carts, or we're doing uh, self check-in, et cetera. Um, and then kind of attached to that is when you're doing this communication and sending out these emails, um, you really need to educate people on what's what's taking place, what's changed. Um, you were not accepting cash. It's gonna be single rider carts. When you get here, don't hang out in the parking lot. You need to check in and go play. Or when you leave, you need to not sit in the parking lot and drink beers with your buddies, but get in your car and go. Um, just certain operational changes that uh, will make the the mass the masses feel more comfortable with going there, knowing that it's no more dangerous than a walk in the park um, and, and whatnot. And then the last thing there is just let people know you're open. Um, as I've been working with clients and as you know different muni different uh, regions and municipalities open up business for golf courses. Um, a lot of people still think that golf courses are closed. And now if they're an avid golfer, they've probably been, you know, searching and looking for the email that says we're open. Um, but the more casual golfer or the guy that doesn't play more than, you know, five or 10 times a year, he might just assume that golf courses are closed. Um, and I've noticed that, uh, working with my clients that um, a lot of people are surprised to hear that golf courses are opening up. Um, so, you know, let that be known, you know, say that even though it might seem obvious to you, it probably isn't to the mass, uh, you know, the, the public. Um, but when you do that, be, be bear in mind that you're going to essentially rub a lot of people the wrong way. Um, you're going to get a lot of negative comments that are attached with that. It doesn't matter how safe you are or, or, what measures you have in place. There's just some people that don't want golf courses to be open. Um, so be prepared to maybe delete a few bad comments on Facebook and Instagram and, and kind of field those as, as you see necessary. Uh, mm -hmm. But you're not going to please everyone. Don't let that discourage you too, right? The yeah. You, it's something we have to do. Just, you're going to do it. it you're going to uh, tick some people off, but um, obviously you have a business to run and, and you can do it safely as long as you as you you know abide by the guidelines that your governments you know put out there for you. Um, and then again, uh, advertising campaigns for our clients have been performing really well for the courses that are open. Um, the demand for golf is actually higher than it was April last year. Um, when I say demand, I'm looking at uh, Google search search traffic and how many people are searching for golf courses. And I think that's because, you know, it's one of the few things that can be done outside safely, 
social distance, uh, social distancing from other people and, and all of that, you know, that's, it's, it's appealing because of that. So even people that maybe uh, don't play golf very often might say, eh, it's a good excuse to get out and, 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 you know, do something different and get out of the house. So, um, you know, that's, that's probably the reason we're seeing that trend is up in states uh, that are open. And, and even in states that aren't open, um, I would suggest that you run even a small Facebook campaign or something, just educating people and communicating that, uh, you know, that you're open and, or you're going to be open uh, soon. Uh, Rob, you can go to that next slide. Um, and so, again, I'll, I'll just breeze through this because I know we have a bunch of questions, but um, the, a lot of our, our clients are doing some kind of pre-sale, pre-paid rounds that are bundled together. Um, I think it's mostly in an effort to uh, generate a little revenue when you're closed. So if you're open, maybe this isn't as applicable, but if you're still closed and, and not really sure when you're going to be opening or your opening still dated out a little bit, um, these prepaid bundled rounds might be a good option for you to just kind of generate some interest and generate some revenue. Um, a lot of the clients that I've been working with have doing no expiration on those bundles. Um, a few of them have, but they've been getting some kickback on that. And that's kind of to be expected, in my opinion. Some of these people don't even think they're going to be able to play golf until the fall, which I, you know, is maybe a little over exaggerated, but, but still. Um, and gift cards and Father's Day gifts and all of that, all that's coming up. Uh, I still think they're going to be popular. I'm putting together campaigns for clients now for Father's Day. Um, and those are still, I think, going to be successful um, as people maybe don't want to go to Walmart or Dick Sporting Goods and find their Father's Day gift. They can just do it online and, and, and buy a gift card for your facility. And then virtual golf tournaments. I'll kind of skip, skip over this one. Uh, Jason's already talked about it a little bit. But if you can do something that encourages more rounds of play um, by, you know, maybe the score, it takes the best uh, score per hole. At over you know all of the, the rounds that you've played or um, or whatever the case it just kind of fills the void for a competitive golfer and encourages more rounds at your course so um, if you can implement that uh, you can even do it manually just with submitting a, a scorecard um, but obviously Gallus takes the headache out of it but uh, yeah let's get to some questions Very good. Thanks. Thanks, Kent, Ryan, everybody there. Um, I, I do want to hit on a couple things as we get to these questions. Um, I want to highlight again that uh, you guys will be, everybody that has attended will be getting an email with a lot of information from us within the next couple of hours. Um, that comes out. It's built. It's automated. It'll get to you in a um, within a couple hours. We do have a handful of questions that I want to get to. There were a couple that I answered within the um, – Q and A uh, text section, but I'm, I'm gonna we're gonna get them answered here for you as well. And if you do have any other questions, please do feel free to type them in there now. We can answer them as as quickly as we can. One question that's kind of a little bit of um, low hanging fruit for me while I'm talking, I'll just go ahead and, and answer. Rick, you asked or, or you said that you assume that, um, and, and you typed this in while Jason was talking about a little bit of tournament scoring and some other things we offer. That um, the app ties into the Gin handicap system or the World Golf handicap system system as it is now and then also golf genius to connect with that because you guys use golf genius too uh, so the answer to those um, those questions are both yes uh, within the tournament software that's in the app for um, custom made tournaments not the month long or, or eclectic like tournaments that Jason was talking about that could last months long even if you set it up for that but for specific events there is full integration into the world handicap system that as long as you have the player's uh, ID numbers that relates to their account, we will pull in their uh, current course index on the day of the event and set it to match the uh, course handicap for how you have the course set up for that event. So it will be handicapped appropriately. Also with regard to Golf Genius, we are fully integrated to Golf Genius. So if you're managing those events in the back end of your Golf Genius dashboard, you simply select that you want to run it through the Gallus app that you have with us, through your app that's with Gallus. And um, it will, for your golfers, convey through your app. Uh, Golf Genius does have an app. 
and it's great to handle these events when they come up, but there's going to be uh, definite advantages for you in running this through your app and that it's yours. You can communicate with these people. There's a, there's a ton of stuff that we could have a much longer webinar and conversation on uh, and advantages of running it through your specific app. So Rick, if you wanna have some discussions about this in a little bit more detail, happy to uh, take that conversation. This one's probably more for, um, this question's probably more for Jason and Ian with regard to mobile check-in um, when somebody's making or, or even a prepaid reservation. Dan and Brad both asked basically the same question. When somebody's making a tea time and paying for it, um, the confirmation that's being delivered to these people is no different than when it's not paid, when it's just a tea time being booked. The confirmations look the same. So they're looking to see if there can be a confirmation that details to these people when they're getting it, whether it is a paid tea time or an unpaid tea time. Maybe you guys can field that question. Ian, Ian that's probably because the confirmation emails come from Club Profit, so probably... That's for you guys. Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming that they're using a feature called the uh, prepaid, which is 100% deposit at the time of booking. It's kind of the less popular way of doing it. There's some problems with, with kind of doing it that way. Um, number one, golfers don't necessarily want to pay for all four at once. So it kind of puts another barrier up for booking. Um, that's why we're really pushing people towards this pre-check. There's also some challenges with doing that with the deposit and how it's, you know, what accounting period it's recorded in and, and how it's applied and, and the reconciliation with it. So we're really encouraging the pre-check feature as opposed to the prepaid feature. Um, so that's the first thing I would say. But let's assume that there's a very good reason why they're using the prepaid feature. Yes, there should be a way for us to uh, change that email confirmation, and we'll reach out to each one of those two uh, courses directly. But I can tell you the first thing we're going to do is talk about, hey, can we switch this to a pre-check situation instead of a prepaid uh, deposit? Very good. Very good. Another question that came in, uh, Jason, maybe you can field this one from Leslie Wright. Leslie asked, how do you set up a leaderboard to just share with a specific group, like a league or a club? I think maybe you can give a little bit of a general answer there. And then Leslie, if we're specifically talking about your app, it'd probably be good for you to get on with um, one of the members on our customer success team to actually take you through a screen share and, and help you build it out for you. But uh, with regard to sharing with specific groups or specific leagues or clubs, Jason, can you detail uh, how that can be built out in, in some general explanation? Yeah, so whether it's through, um, if it's for a specific outing, like using the, the tournament software, uh, like a traditional outing, um, there is a specific unique, unique URL um, for that uh, that leaderboard. Uh, one, they'd be able to access it in the app. So if they're participating in the event, um, there's a leaderboards button that they can go to and they can access it instantly there. Um, but you could also take that uh, URL um, and um, you know have one to one create a beautiful email for you to send it out to the specific uh, you know participants who are playing in it or even add it to your website um, and then something and very similar with the um, uh, the monthly tournament series if you are setting up something that is like a month long event or a multi day event again those those URLs we can set them up so that they are uh, unique and specific and then um, if you obviously have the specific members of your league or who are participating in the event. Uh, again, you could email that to them. We could add a button in the app where they have instant access to it as well um, at any time, and they can go check to see where they're standing. Great. Great. So um, we are going to get to all these questions. There's a bunch more yet. Uh, Brian Short asked for Gallus and Club Profit Solutions. Is there a simple checklist available for us to send out to our customers and members on how to use the app? an online check-in via the integration with Club Profit. So I can feel this one because I know that we're building something and Scott and Ian, you may have something to add as well. We are working in our marketing department right now to get a video built. It's going to be built, built really very shortly that will basically share via using it in an app, going through all the buttons, the screen share view of that for a customer, how that operates. And we're going to give all of our courses that have an app with us the capability to plug that video in in a button, basically a how to book a tea time and check in for it video that will be there. So it will be a little instructional piece that will be there in the app. Hopefully we'll have that built within the next 
seven to 10 business days and have available for everybody to grab and uh, lay into their apps. And I don't know if Ian and Scott, you guys have anything to add to that? Yeah, uh, Brian Short at Penn State, check your email, the video is sitting there in your email. All the other attendees, there's a file section to this presentation and I've uploaded the pre-check uh, video, kind of walks you through the process. Um, so feel free to grab that. And um, I've yeah. seen, we've seen we've seen some customers do some cool stuff too. Uh, Patrick Rinner at Wilson Golf Group um, on his websites, it kind of goes through. Hey, this is what you're going to need to do. You're going to need to book online. You're going to pay online. Here's some tips. You know, we're not going to do cash. So there's some cool website um, stuff that's been done. I'm sure one-to-one uh, -one marketing has probably set up a few um, web pages and websites as well uh, to to speak to that. But we've seen some customers do some creative stuff to. Again, educate their golfers, drive them there in the email confirmation and say, you know, before you show up at the golf course, read this. And it takes them to a web page maybe with all of that stuff. Have you guys seen that, Ryan, on a few, few of the golf courses? Yeah, certainly. Um, they've just – we put together quite a few dedicated pages just with kind of instructions and what to expect and just, uh, you know, for messaging to get out there in advance of somebody showing up at the facility. So, Very yeah. good. All right, some more questions that have come in. Uh, Amy Walls, I can answer your question really pretty quickly. Can Gallus work with existing online ordering? If it exists online right now, yes. Uh, the answer is yes in all likelihood. I would like to have a quick conversation with you off this webinar about it that we can test it and we can look at it and make sure that it does work the way you would want it to. But basically, if you have it in a way that it exists on your website right now, we can make it work in your app for you. Uh, it might not be the fully integrated one like we have. Uh, for example, in the virtual caddy, if you remember that screen when I had it up, it had a food and beverage button on it. We might not be able to get it to link to that like we do with our on tap feature, but we can probably put a button into your app for something that you have existing online and, and available right now. Um, a good discussion for us to have outside of that. This question I think can be to all three companies, so maybe each of the, th the three of us can answer this in some way. Julie asked, uh, Gallus mentioned a wallet function. Is that up and running now? I know what our answer is for Gallus. I'll let Jason elaborate there. Um, but can it be used for prepaid rounds? I know that One to One and Club Profit also have some answers for some current and existing solutions to answer that um, right now. And then maybe Jason, you can follow up with what we have in the works. Um, yeah, I mean, I can start. Uh, it is not up and running yet. It's something that uh, is in the pipe and uh, uh, we're working as fast as possible to get it out um, uh, so that our, our clients have that option. But no, unfortunately, not not live yet. Working on it. With Gallus, that's true. I do know Ryan and um, Kent and then Ian and Scott. I, I do know that you guys have the capability to handle some things with regard to prepaid rounds uh, and some other e-commerce type features. Can you guys elaborate on that a little bit for Julie? Um, so for prepaid, prepaid rounds, what you might be thinking of is uh, with Campaign Pilot, um, we have an integration with Club Profit where any sort of orders or payments that are made through Campaign Pilot will be pushed and mapped to the product in Club Profit. And so um, you could set up a product or an event or whatever, a tea time, if you will. Um, and, uh, and and your users would be able to purchase that through the Campaign Pilot um, uh, landing page that is built and that will be, get pushed into Club Profit. I'm not sure if that exactly answered the question, but um, that's kind of the piece that uh, perhaps might uh, be a workaround uh, for now for you. Scott, do you have any anything on that or Ian? I'm trying to find Julie's question here. Is this the one? Julie's in the chat section. She asked, Alice mentioned the wallet function. Is that up and running now? We answered that. Can that be used for prepaid rounds? It will be able to be used for prepaid rounds when we do have that up and running, but you guys do have some prepaid functionality with regard to 100% deposit or other things like that, correct? No, I mean, it's just, it's, it's putting a credit card on file uh, the same way they do it with a Gallus pre-check where the first time they check in, they want to save their credit card information. Um, we're really not recommending the prepaid function right now. We're recommending the, the pre-check. Uh, it's much more usable and accounting friendly. Um, yeah, so the deposit has just, it had some, it was technology that was available, you know, five years ago. So some people were just activating it, but it has some, as Ian said, some accounting uh, issues where it, it collects the money on Tuesday for around on Saturday. 
It forces the booking golfer to pay for all four, so that's not a good user experience. There's an extra step that has to be done on the day of play to recognize the revenue. So when you add all those things in and all the extra work, we're just like, why don't we, why don't we just do what the golfers want? 99% of golfers pay online. Uh, let's do that. So let's go to the to the right solution. It doesn't mean that somebody says somebody can just say, "Yeah, forget you guys. I'm doing 100% deposit." Great. I mean, it's you could turn it on and it just turns everybody over, you know, to paying for their green fees right away. But uh, we're trying to trying to move towards kind of the more uh, sleek and elegant solution. I got a couple questions here, Rob. I'll, I'll rattle off real quick. Um, one is from Adam Bain. Can email receipts be auto generated through club profit or is a manual process. There's an option that can be turned on that says every time a sale is finalized, uh, pop up on the screen. Would you like a print receipt, email receipt or both? And we, uh, the support team can help you turn that option on and that will automate email receipts for anybody you have an email address for. And it's a great way to gather email addresses if you don't have their email address. Uh, another question from Jackie. Um, she's asking if we can send the payment link at you know the on the day of play so that she's not recognizing revenue on tuesday for golf that's happening on wednesday and that's a good point during the pre-check process one of the things we ask is do you want the pre-check invitation and link to be in the tea time confirmation which means it might happen two or three days before the day of play or would you prefer that it's only in the uh reminder email that goes out x hours before play so depending on the operator we're dealing with, some of them say, I don't care if I'm recognizing some revenue on Tuesday that should be on Wednesday. I just want to get paid. And in those cases, we have the confirmation email with the Gallus link and this check-in link. If the golf course says, no, I don't want any revenue recognized on the wrong day, the answer there is only put the pre-check link and the Gallus link into the confirmation reminder email that comes the day of play. Good. I know that I've had a number of conversations with courses recently um, that have talked about even considering changing their accounting process or what's going on to make that reconciliation uh, make sense to them. Uh, basically saying, if I've got a golfer that's willing to pay on Monday for a uh, round of golf on Saturday, I'm going to take his money on Monday versus waiting until Saturday and just change their internal processes versus what it used to be. Because if you've got somebody willing to pay you now, I mean, I would recommend taking the money now. Um, but that's, uh, again, you know, relevant to each course's individual processes and, and how they work. Um, Spencer, you had a question. Does the Gallus app integrate with Tion? Um, I know you sent this to me privately in this, but I, I think this is a, a good one to answer publicly. So Tion or any, virtually any other booking engine T-sheet point of sale provider out there, um, with regard to full-on integration, to the point of sale system for a pre-check system like we're talking about now, meaning they pay for their tea time. It's it's processed through your point of sale system. It shows up on your tea sheet. No, uh, that only exists with Club Profit with with Gallus Golf right now. However, everything else can happen with your other with your booking engine. Tea times can be laid into the app. People can book their tea times remotely. It's just that payment section and integration to your point of sale system that doesn't exist, which is what we're beginning to learn is, is going to be a key function coming up here. So we're kind of about halfway there with Tion to where we're at with Club Profit. Um, we get you all the way to payment with them. We don't, and really any other booking engine provider, we can get you to payment with them, we can't get the payment process through your point of sale system right now um, w with that. And I, Jason, I don't know if you have any additional comments to add to that. No, I mean, just uh, that, you know, a lot of the, the functionality that, that's critical, critical right now for, for clubs and, and the pre-check, um, you know, the end-to-end -end integration is that, that lives with, with Club Profit, between Club Profit and Gallus there. Um, there, there was, while I'm, um, uh, on here, I, I noticed a question about, um, the being able to related to what Ian answered there is being able to, um, set a time window for, for pre-check and you can do that. So, um, you can, even if, if you want an email to go out that says, Hey, here's, we're going to accept payment through, um, our pre-check feature right on your device. Um, 
you can set it to say, hey, look, we will only allow them to actually pay for their round, you know, five hours or 30 minutes or whatever it is, if you want it to be on the same day, even if they click that um, uh, from their email and it takes them to the page or in the app to ask them to, you know, check in and pay for their round, there'll be a message there that says, um, you know, you're, you're not eligible to check in yet. And it'll actually will tell them the time that they will be eligible to check in um, and pay. Similar like you would see, if you're trying to check in your for your flight and it's too early, it'll tell you, hey, you're too early. Um, so you will be able to control that time window on how early you will allow people to, to check in and pay for their round of golf. I know Brad Chapman from the Falls asked a really good question. Ian uh, or Scott, you may have something to follow up with me uh, on this right now, but his question is, where does the credit card info live? Who's responsible for that in the event of a breach? Uh, with regard to this, as it, as uh, your app with Gallus, your app for the Falls connects to Club Profit in, within this pre-check system, the app is basically no different than if you plop down another computer on the desk in the shop. Each individual user's app is basically another operating point of sales system. So as data comes in through that app, it's being stored exactly the same as if the customer had walked into the golf shop previously and handed a credit card to one of your staff members, that car got swiped or stuck in the machine. It's a token that is stored within the processor. Uh, it's not something that um, there's any data that is sitting somewhere regarding a breach. And I don't know if Ian or Scott, if you want to address this any differently. I was reading questions, so I got about half of that. Yeah, from well, there. I would say, uh, Rob, it's actually better. Um, you were saying it's similar to them handing the credit card to your right. staff. It's actually better because the staff isn't taking They're the not credit. handling it. Yeah, the correct. Part of what you said was the tokenization. Um, and this is definitely not a PCI <laughs> thing because we'll get well. Check to make sure your software is PCI compliant and PADSS certified, um, which we are because you want you want that credit card data to be accessible by you, but secured. And, and that's that's those are the steps that Core Profit has gone through to, to do that. So I'll, I'll, I'm not going to mention PCI ever again. So keep on keep on rolling. Um, one, a couple questions specific to Club Profit here. Uh, Michelle Wittig asks, for Club Profit, is there a way to distinguish check-in versus payment? They can be somewhat different. We sometimes show payment, then we haven't, then they haven't arrived. I may have missed this answer earlier is what she's asking. So um, check-in versus payment, I think, as it relates to physical arrival at the course ready to go out on the first tee. Yeah, so pre-check, it, it, um, it marks that tee time, as we showed in the slide, it marks it with a green background and a dollar sign on it that that person is paid and checked in. Um, I understand that could be a little confusing because in the past that meant, because nobody was paying before they got to the golf course in the past. So in the past that meant they were probably on property. Now you might see a foursome that's paid, checked in, marked as green on the tee sheet, and they're not even there yet. Um, so I think we'll have to deal with those specifics offline with Michelle, but th there are some challenges to work through with that. Yeah. And I, don't, I don't know what the future of physical check-in even means anymore. You know, we'll have to look at that through this new lens is like, all I care about is that you're all four have checked in and paid. And I guess we'll just see you on the first tee. Although I know some people are trying to corral their groups and you have to remain holding then you're allowed out so that might put you know some features that we need to develop um or maybe you're you know maybe you're putting starting time you know or, or some flag in you know uh, in our system you're able to you know to note that they are there on property so yeah well, one, one question mike had here too and i just want to make sure that there's clarity on this um mike asked if Round is paid on Friday for, I mean, on Monday for a Saturday round. Is it still going to show as paid? Yes. I think, Ian, you just kind of highlighted that. When they do pay for it through any kind of pre-check or mobile check-in mode, it is marked paid in perpetuity. Once it's paid, it's marked paid. That's never changing. It's, it's going to stay marked that way. Um, it looks like one just came in from Doug Hawley. Uh, Scott, Doug from Redwoods in Vancouver. Good to see you back helping golf courses. Yeah, well... That's debatable, but, <laughs> but but he called me senior earlier, so I'm not so sure how I feel about it. But um, check in Canada, it's a good question. And Doug's, um, yeah. Doug's a great operator. With regard to Canada. I, yeah. I, I, I saw Doug's T-sheet and it was 
straight green from 5 30 a.m to 7 p.m like yeah. you know four some green after green so uh so some golf operators are as busy as they've ever been so uh, the initial push was to get gals pre-check uh working um in the u.s just because we already had some technology built we added a layer of complexity with moneris and i believe it has deployed in a few golf courses um to get the bugs out or make sure it's ready to go as soon as as soon as it is ready for prime time we will release it in canada we will you know press release it and have a an email notification but there was just um some additional work that gallus uh works 100 hours a week to try to get through with moneris and um it's starting to deploy out there in canada so we will we will for sure bring that north of the border as soon as it's available should it should be soon and i'm not going to put jason on the spot but i'll just say soon um, Heather Wilson, you had a question. I'm going to reach out to you individually on this because your question was, is there an example of a club that utilizes uh, Acuity like I had talked about? I'm going to reach out to you separately from this because I can get on a quick screen share with you and actually quickly set up how it could work for your specific club and, and show you how it would, would work there. Um, so I'll reach out separate from this webinar to uh, to discuss that with you. And let, I know you guys are kind of leafing through the questions right now. I think we've covered one more from Becky. All. One more from okay. Becky. She's asking yeah. in the app if there's a way that the receipt the golfer can show uh, from their phone after they check in. Yeah. yeah so you'll yeah. have a screen in your check-in button that will show uh, which golfers in your tea time have paid it'll be marked right beside it paid or not paid meaning checked in um, so in that same button that you would access to check in for that tea time golfers will be listed in your tea time whether they're paid or not equating to checked in or not and I, and I know Becky had asked about the email confirmation uh, as well which uh, conversation with club profit this week is it's uh, it's it's in deployment to uh, to get out, get out to you as soon as possible, so that way they will have the confirmation in the app that they'll be able to show the staff or the starter um, in addition to uh, an email uh, confirmation that that will be sent. Which so you're talking. We're not talking about the confirmation of the tee time booking itself, which is that automated email is going out. Right. We're talking about after the golfer uses the pre-check functionality, that Club Profit is working on sending another email saying, "Hey, you, you're paid. Correct. You're ready to go." Okay. Correct. Yep. Very good. Well, all, thanks for attending. Thanks to my fellow presenters here for being on the webinar with us. Again, just to reiterate, you will be getting an email if you attended this webinar within the next couple of hours uh, with a link to view the webinar again. You'll be able, It's a video. You're going to be able to pause, stop at things, look at slides in more detail. Within that email, there are links to each of our companies that that link goes directly to a form where you can put your information in and request us to uh, get back in touch with you individually and talk about whatever it is you'd like to talk about. Um, Kent has had a little plastic surgery throughout the course of this uh, this webinar. <laughs> looking, looking a little differently at the end yeah, than what it was at the beginning. Um, it looks Quarantine, like yeah. that, that's his. That's his. That's, is that the mask you wear to the grocery store? <laughs> <laughs> Face masks are required. So, again, thanks everybody for attending. We're going to shut it down for now and uh, look forward to a successful 2020 golf season ahead of us still. Thanks, thanks everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Rob. Bye bye.